We begin with the temporomandibular joint, or TMJ. The TMJ is a synovial joint formed between the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone and the condyloid process of the mandible. The joint contains a fibrocartilaginous articular disc and is surrounded by a capsule. It is supported by the lateral temporomandibular, sphenomandibular, and stylomandibular ligaments. The joint is innervated by the auriculotemporal nerve and the masseteric branch of the trigeminal nerve. The TMJ derives its movement from the masseter, temporalis, lateral and mediopterygoid muscles. The lateral pterygoid is attached to the articular disc and assists in controlling its position during TMJ functioning. The masseters are attached onto the angle of the mandible and the temporalis onto the coronoid process of the mandible. First, observe the passively resting jaw. Note its position, symmetry, bony and soft tissue contours. Then ask the patient to open and close their mouth slowly. Note the movement. Is it smooth and controlled or sharp, jerky or staggered? Note the end range position in full depression and elevation. The patient's occlusion is noted and hence the presence of under, over or crossbite. Observe their face for facial muscle paralysis caused by upper or lower motor neuron lesions. Then inspect the inside of their mouth. Look for any lesions, signs of infection, poor dental work or dental caries. Also note if the patient thrusts their tongue forward whilst they are talking. Now palpate over the joint. Feel for the presence of abnormal bony contours. The TMJ should also be palpated as the patient opens and closes their mouth. Check for abnormal muscle tone, mostly noted in the masseters. Ask the patient to open the mouth as wide as possible, but slowly, to check for dislocation or an audible click. The preauricular, postauricular, submandibular, and cervical lymph nodes may be palpated for abnormality. Feel for any crepitus on movement and palpate carefully for areas of pain or tenderness. If appropriate, the lateral and medial pterygoids can be palpated intraorally using light palpation with one digit protected with a rubber glove. In the sitting position, ask the patient to perform the following active movements. Depression, elevation, retraction, protraction, and lateral deviation. Note the muscle strength, joint stability, and the presence of pain or crepitations. If a particular movement is anticipated to be painful, then for accuracy, this movement should be performed last. Ask the patient or their partner if they are aware of bruxism or teeth grinding. Getting the patient to swallow some water or to bite onto a wooden spatula may provide you with additional information about the jaw strength and control. Can I get you to take a sip of water? Yep. Sit up straight for me. That's fine. Now, can I get you to bite onto this wooden spatula and don't let go, yeah? Okay. That's fine. Now the other way. Okay, fine. Passive movements of the jaw are best carried out in the supine position. Check for depression. The mandible is held between the thumb and index finger. 
the free hand palpates the TMJ as the mandible is depressed. Then assess elevation. Using the same hold, palpate the TMJ with the free hand as the mandible is returned to its closed position. For lateral deviation, use the hold described earlier to move the mandible laterally back to the midline and then to the opposite side. The TMJ is palpated with a free hand. Finally, assess traction. Rotate the patient's head to one side and contact the mandible with the ulna border of your hand. The free hand palpates the TMJ as it is tractioned. If the patient allows it, end feel of all ranges can also be assessed. The presence of pain, resistance to movement, clicking, crepitation and abnormal end feel should be noted. For active resistant movements with the patient in the supine position, test for depression. What I'd like you to do first of all is to lower your jaw and resist me. That's fine, relax slowly. Now, Elevation. Now I'd like you to pull it back up again and resist me. That's fine, thank you. Lateral deviation. Now I'd like you to push your jaw to the right. Now push it to the left. And protraction to is to push your jaw upwards and resist me. That's fine. The test should start from the neutral position to avoid stress to capsular or ligamentous structures. Ask the patient to slowly build up resistance against your hand as you attempt to stop the mandible from moving. Note any weakness, pain, crepitation, or apprehension.